2012, the university population of a country was 160,000 and was increasing at an annual rate of 4.5%. The growth in the university population can be represented by the exponential function p equals 160,000 multiplied by 1.045 raised to the power of n, where p represents the university population of the country as a function of the number of years n since 2012. So lots of information there. Something that I really want to highlight and something that you guys need to get used to is just really understand your variables, right? P is going to be the population of a country um, since 2012, right? So N is the number of years since 2012. So we kind of have an idea about what those variables are. The first question, if the function representing the population is a disguised version of y equals a times b to the power of x, state the values for a and b. So when we compare y equals a times b to the power of x to this population function that they've created for us, we can see that the coefficient out front, the a value, is 160,000. And our b value is equal to the base of our power, so 1.0 Four, five. Now something that's important to note is where the b value came from because eventually you guys are going to have to build your own equations. And now it says that it is growing at an annual rate of 4.5%. So where the b value comes from is 1 plus 0 0.045. Now the b value does not equal just 0 0.045 and that's important to note. Right? If we said that our B value was equal to 0 0.045, well then that B value falls between 0 and 1, and it would represent a decreasing function. And this isn't decreasing, right? It says in the question that it's increasing. So we'll have to add 1 to that number just to show growth. If the question was stated as decreasing by an annual rate of 4.5%, then it's a little bit different. We'd go 1 minus 0 0.045. So really important to notice because, like I said, you guys will have to build equations eventually. All right, so part B, use the graphing calculator to sketch the function, which will show the population growth from 2012 to 2040 and state an appropriate window. All right, so I'm just going to start graphing this or at least punching it into my calculator. And I'm going to take two seconds, just double check that, make sure that it's right, looks good. And now, with every single question that we come across in this unit, you guys, especially if, you, if we have to do it graphically, there are going to be window settings that we have to set up. So just think of that as part of the question, right? Every time you have a new question, you're going to have to adjust the window settings. And that's pretty challenging in itself. So starting off, let's just understand our variables, right? X, so our x-axis is the number of years since 2012. Now, they wanted us to show this graph, which would show the population growth from 2012 to 2040. So how many years since 2012 is 2040? Right, let's just figure that out. So 2040 minus 2012 equals 28. So when I set up my x well, min and x max, that's referring to time. So we're going to say zero, right? Zero years since 2012 would be 2012. And my x max will be 28, or you could just say 30 years since 2012, right? And that would bring us to the year 2042, which includes what they wanted us to show. Uh, the scale, you can change that if you want, right? If I just graph this, you can see that that x scale is pretty crowded. So if that bothers you, you can just change it to, let's say, a 5, and it's going to look a little bit nicer, right? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So now the next thing that we're going to have to adjust will be our, our Y min, our Y max, and our Y scale. So if you remember just exploring that basic exponential function, the A value is equal to our Y intercept. So in this case, our Y intercept is 160,000. So it's actually quite large. Now, if that's our y-intercept and it grows from that value, I'm going to want to go to something a little bit higher. Let's go to 200,000. That might be wrong, but it's a good place to start. 
And then maybe I'll make my scale go up by 50,000, right? So it's not too crowded. Let's graph it, see if this is appropriate. So no, I think we could probably do a better job, right? When we graph this function, we want to make sure that it well takes up most of this screen. So I think the problem is that wasn't enough. I'm going to go to 300,000. And if it takes me, I don't know, four tries, who cares? Let's get it right. I'm going to go to 500,000 to be safe. And I think that looks pretty good. So let's state our window settings. Now there is a way that we're going to do this. We're going to basically write it out as we see it. So I'll start off with my X window settings. So it's going to be X min, X max, X scale. And now we'll look at the Y window settings. So Y min, Y max, and Y scale. We said it was 50,000. Okay, the next question. So use the features of a graphing calculator to determine the population in the year 2015. Okay, so the year 2015 is how many years since 2012? Well, subtract the two and the difference would be our answer. So it's three years since 2012. So basically in this question, they're giving us an X value and we have to find the Y value. So let's, well, find the value of this function when X equals three. And we can do it one of two ways, right? We could just use our equation, right? Our function, replace N with three punch it out from there and get the answer or we can use our graphing calculator seeing as everything's set up I'm just going to use our graphing calculator so when we're given an x value we go second trace value and it allows me to punch in the x value it's going to spit out the corresponding y value so basically it says three years since 2012 so in the year 2015 there's a university population of 182,000 so I'll just write down those calculator steps. So what I did, I went second, trace, option one, value, and it tells me why, or the population was 182,587. Let's try this next question. So use the features of a graphing calculator to determine the number of years re required to the nearest year for the population to double from its 2012 size. Okay, so now they want us to find the number of years. All right, so they want us to find X. That means they're giving us Y. So they're giving us the final population. Um, maybe not very uh, directly, but they are. They just say it's double the 2012 size. So what we're going to have to do in this case is graph y1 equaling our function, so the 160,000 multiplied by 1.045 to the power of x, and then I'm going to graph a second graph, right? This is how we will punch in y values. That's going to be 2 times 160,000 right, which is 320,000. So I'm just going to do that right now. 320,000. So that line represents where we have a population of 320,000, right, double the 2012 population. And now we want to know, well, when is it doubled? Right, so how many years since 2012? So we're going to be looking at this intersection point. More specifically, we're going to look at the x coordinate of this uh, intersection point. So we're going to go second trace, I believe it's option five, intersect. 
All right, so second trace option five. And then the calculator prompts you right first curve, second curve, guess. Just make sure you're close to the intersection point that you want to calculate, which we are. Hit enter, enter, enter. And it tells me when X or when N equals 15.7 years. So let's round that because they wanted to the nearest year. So we're going to say 16 years since 2012. And now did they want the number of years since 2012 or did they want the actual year? So the number of years required, well, 16 years, I suppose. But if they wanted to know the actual year, we'll go 2012 plus 16 years gives us 2028. 20,